Hey everyone, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for studying God's word with me. I hope you're having an amazing day. And you know, we've been walking through first and second Corinthians together, and this has been a challenging but impactful uh, series that we've been in. And if you have your Bible, let's open up to first Corinthians chapter eight. We're gonna read verses nine through 13, and it says, but you must be careful so that your freedom does not cause others with a weaker conscience to stumble. For if others see you with your superior knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, won't they be encouraged to violate their conscience by eating food that has been offered to an idol? So because of your superior knowledge, a weak believer for whom Christ died will be destroyed. And when you sin against other believers by encouraging them to do something that they believe is wrong, you are sinning against Christ. So if what I eat causes another believer to sin, I will never eat meat again as long as I live. For I don't want to cause another believer to stumble. You know, here we see Paul explaining this concept of causing another believer to stumble. Have you ever heard that phrase before? Over the next few minutes, I wanna break down this passage and really talk about two main ideas that we see in this passage. And, and number one, we see him talk about freedoms. And number two, we see him talk about sacrifice. You know, Paul begins this passage by talking about how your freedom should not cause others with a weaker conscience to stumble. And in this case, he's addressing food that was sacrificed to idols back in that day. And, and back then, there were many pagan temples in Corinth. And you could usually get meat at a discounted price or a believer might have found themselves in a pagan temple at an event or a family gathering. And you know, Paul is telling the church, it's not a sin to eat this food. It, it's, it's, it's not a sin to eat food that's been sacrificed to idols because food was a neutral object. But we do need to be careful. He was telling them, you need to be careful of how you use your freedom in Christ. Just because something is wrong doesn't mean that it is wise. And so Paul is telling the church at Corinth to be wise with their actions, particularly in how it affects other people. And he's saying, don't get caught up in whether something is right or wrong, or whether something is a sin or not a sin. But you should get caught up in whether or not your actions will influence other people to stumble. How do your actions influence other people? You know, we have to think about how our decisions affect other people. We have to think about how we use our freedoms and how our freedoms can affect other people. And so, I wanna take a minute to think about this question. Do your actions help other believers to pursue Christ more? Or is it the opposite? You know, or, or could your actions cause somebody to be tripped up in their faith? You know, this is where sacrifice comes in. Paul is wanting the church to understand that other believers are watching and other believers are learning from your life. And what you let into your life is okay with you. And they're, they're looking at your life and saying, okay, well, it must be okay for me, but it could be something that could be harmful for them. You know, I thought about this. It's like taking a child, a small child, on a scary roller coaster, okay? Sure, they may have just reached that height requirement. They're right above that line. But that does not mean that it will actually be beneficial for them to ride the roller coaster. It could be very scary for them. It could be traumatic for them. Just because they meet the requirement doesn't mean that it's right for them. And so in the same way, Paul is talking about violating someone's conscience. If, if we partake in something that someone else would deem wrong, then it could be a stumbling block for them. You know that word stumble, it means to snare or to offend or to cause to sin. Did you know that you could actually lead someone into sin by doing something that isn't a sin? Isn't that crazy how that works? It's called putting someone in a position to stumble based on your actions. You know, Paul explains that he would never eat meat again. How, would that ever be you? That's, that's going to be hard for me to never eat meat again if it prevented somebody from stumbling because that was something that people would get tripped up on back in that day. You know, the law or what is a sin, what is not a sin. Just because it was not a big deal to Paul didn't mean that it wouldn't be a big deal to others. And Paul knew this, and he was willing to sacrifice his freedom in order to build others up. 
You know, is there something in your life that comes to mind when you think about this idea? You know, I can think about maybe alcohol, where where maybe for you, alcohol is not really something that you would consider harmful to you. You're you would be the type of person, maybe let's say that is okay with having a glass of wine with dinner or something. But what if there's a friend of yours that is a recovering alcoholic and they're just trying to stay sober and <laughs> walk out their salvation? Going to dinner with this person and having a glass of wine may not be helpful for that person because it might tell that person that it's okay if they partake in that, but for them it might not be helpful. These are the things that Paul is talking about. You don't want to be a stumbling block for somebody because that could come between them and their relationship with God. You know, this is what God, what Paul is talking about. How do you steward your freedoms? That's the question I want to ask you. Are you using your freedoms to point people to Jesus? You know, we could all benefit from pausing to think about others before we make decisions. But remember, just because something isn't wrong doesn't mean it is wise. Hey, this has been such a deep word today, but I've enjoyed diving deeper with you, and I hope you've had a great rest of your day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.